Hi and welcome to this Power BI tutorial on date tables. A very quick tutorial in fact. The first thing we'll do is we'll talk about what a date table is and then secondly we'll discuss do you actually need one in your particular model in your instance. Then of course if you do need one, otherwise it would be a pretty short demo, we'll look at creating a date table using Power Query and then we'll look at creating a date table using DAX. And of course once we've got a date table created then we need to create a relationship in the model between the date table and the other tables in the model. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so what is a date table? Well, it's a separate table with a contiguous set of dates, i.e. a complete set of dates from January 1st in, a, in one year to December the 31st in another year. Additionally, we'll have optional columns which we could use for hierarchies and sorting and grouping data by. Those optional columns might include the year, the week number 1 to 52, or some years, depending uh, how you're using this, might have 53 weeks. We'll have the month number 1 through to 12, the month name January, February, etc. The day number 1 to 31, the day of the week, Saturday, Sunday, the day of week number 0 to 6 or 1 to 7, etc, etc. The list is literally limitless. So, now we know what a date table is, do you actually need one? Well, why might you not require a date table? Well, you may have a sufficient list of dates to produce your report already, which is fine. Secondly, you might have a single table only in your Power BI file and you're happy to use Power BI's built-in date hierarchy feature. We'll look at that. And then your model might already contain a date table. Certainly if you're connecting through to a data warehouse, I would expect that to be the case. Why might you need a date table? Well, if you want to filter or display different queries, i.e. different tables based upon the same date or time value, same month, same year, etc. Or you need time-based calculations such as month to date, year to date, year on year. Those types of calculations need a complete and valid date table. Or if you're using some sort of customized calendar, so perhaps a fiscal year calendar, or you've got specific week numbering system and you need to filter things by week number, then you're going to need a date table. Okay, so here we are in Excel. Why do I bring this up? Well, this is the source file for our demo example. And you can see here, I've got a dump of some data from a sales order processing system and column N lists the date of the transaction. So the first one is the 9th of March, 2018. So fairly easy. Notice in that table, there's no specific month, there's no specific year, there's no specific quarter, etc. Let's bring that data into Power BI. So you can see in Power BI, I've got the query table one and we can find the date field and highlight that. So you can see the date has just come in. Again, there's no quarter, there's no year, etc. So Power BI has an inbuilt date hierarchy. Let's switch that on. And I've got to say it is switched on by default, so you might not need to do this. Under file, and options within the data load section of the current file area. Within time intelligence, I can select to turn the auto date stroke time hierarchy feature on. So let's do that. Now, once that's completed, you can see that I now have a date hierarchy beneath the date field. And if I expand that, then I have a column called year, one called quarter, one called month and one called day. But these are virtual columns. They don't actually exist within the Power BI table. We can't see them in the view we're looking at there, but we can utilize those columns to build a report. Let's do that. So let's just go and take a stat column chart. I'm going to add the sales price into the values. And then in the date, I'm going to add in the date hierarchy. So initially that splits the sales values into year and of course we can drill through that hierarchy of year, quarter, month and day to view all of the figures that we want. So that's for inbuilt date hierarchy. I'm actually going to leave that switched on for now. Let's assume though that I did want 
a separate date calendar. Let's go and create one using M code. So where do you get the M code to create a date file from? Well, you can obviously search the internet. I've loaded up a date table.txt file into GitHub, but mine certainly by no means is the only one. But if you do want to use mine, then have a search for Ben Howard or Ben Dash Howard, and then uh, within that repository, look for Power Query Date Table. If we go back to Power BI and select Transform Data, then I'm able to paste that M code, that query, into Power Query. The way to do that is to select New Source and then Blank Query. Now, I'll just change the name of that query. I'm going to call it Date-M for M code. And then if I click in Advanced Editor, I'm able to paste the M code in. Now, the only thing you need to concern yourself with is the start date here, which I've set to the 1st of 1st, 2007, and the end date here to the 31st of the 12th, 2027. You can change those as you see fit. I'm just going to select Done, and you can see very quickly, I create a whole new date table with all of those optional fields that we talked about in the slides. Now, there's a couple of other things that I need to do once this query has come in. The first thing I want to do is really remove these hierarchies. If you are using date tables, then you don't want the hierarchy. So, so let me quickly go and turn off that date hierarchy feature, which we turned on just a minute ago. Okay, the next thing that we should do is we should mark the date table as an actual date calendar. So with the table selected, I can select on table tools and then I can mark this table as a date table. We then need to create the relationship between the two tables. So I'll just drag the date fields to do that. Best practice then would mean that I hide the date field from table one because I don't need to see that in the report. If we go back onto report view, instead of using the date table from table one, I now want to use the date from the date table. And of course, I can then utilize all of the other features to create the relevant hierarchies that I might need or might want to display within my Power BI visual. So I've created a date table using M. What about if I wanted to use DAX? Well, in this case, I'll go over to sqlbi.com. They've got some great articles around date tables and how to use DAX to create date tables. So I'm simply going to copy this code and go back into Power BI. From the modeling tab, I can select new table. And you can see we have an issue here because the DAX code is referencing a table called sales and within there, a column called order date in order to determine the minimum year. I don't have a sales table, but I do have a table called table one. So we'll enter that instead. And then within table one, of course, I do have a date field. And so we'll reference that and just get rid of the order date. So that's going to give me the minimum date or the minimum year for the, the fields in my, my uh, transaction table. And we'll do the same for the max as well. And once we've done that, of course, we can just press return and that will go away and again, create a new table for me. In this case, it'll be called date. Let's go and have a look at that. You can see that we have the date, the calendar year, the month and the month number. So a very simple uh, date table at the moment. Again, we'll mark this one as a date table. Now the date has the date and time in this column. I don't need the time, so I'm just going to say the data type is just the date. And once that is done, then I can go and create the relationship in the same sort of way. And if I wanted to, I could now utilize the date table that I just created in DAX. Whether you use DAX or Power Query to create your date table is really a matter of personal preference. OK, so now you have an understanding of date tables and you know two ways to create a date table. So hopefully that's been useful. If you do like the video and you found it useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel and enjoy your Power BI journey. Catch you later.